Watch how European commissioner Vera Jourova blames disinformation on Twitter directly on Russia. Look at this quote from the headline that I just showed you, the BBC headline saying it's bad. Russian disinformation is really bad, mostly on Twitter. She says the Russian state has engaged in the war of ideas to pollute our information space with half truths and lies to create a false image that democracy is no better than autocracy. Russia was aiming at a multi-million euro weapon of mass manipulation, she says. Uh, the threat was particularly serious because of the war in Ukraine and the upcoming European elections. Okay, how does she know that? How does she know that Russians are really vociferous and active on Twitter? Well, she uses as proof this EU study that was commissioned by the European Union, uh, by a disinformation monitoring startup called Trust Lab, which compiled this report, Code of Practice on Disinformation. Um, incidentally, Trust Lab is a partner with the CIA, so I'm not sure uh, that <laughs> this report that's will- Shocking. Shocking. Wow. Well, I know. That's where she's getting your information. Yes. Well, well, okay, shocking a couple things, right? The European Union decided to use this company that partners with the CIA to, and that's what they're going to base their, that's what they're going to hang their hat on for disinformation. You don't think there's any bias there? You don't think there's any problem there? Okay. Also, European taxpayers are paying for this report from the CIA. I don't think uh, uh, most Europeans that I speak to, um, sorry, I have a hair in my mouth. They, they do not want to be led around by a leash by the United States. Um, I don't think European politicians have got that memo though because they're fine to hire this company that has a contract with the CIA. Do you see where I'm going here? They are creating misinformation based on a study about misinformation and I cannot. <laughs> so based on a study that's uh, backed by the CIA. Right. I mean, let's just pretend it's not that in and of itself is is bad enough is that they're using the guise of misinformation to perpetuate misinformation. Right. And, you know, I hate the word misinformation. So let's I don't just, even know what they mean anymore. What is disinformation? Malinformation? Well, they're What's using the, the popularity of this platform of misinformation to tell lies. The contentious debate between democracy and autocracy is a longstanding one with proponents and critics on both sides. As an African, I recognize that both systems have their advantages and drawbacks, making it challenging to definitively claim that one is universally better than the other. It's no secret that in African nations, both democracy and autocracy have failed spectacularly, largely due to bigotry, that is, tribalism or negative ethnicity that insulates corrupt Western puppets working for the interests of foreign powers and not their tribe, let alone their country. In an ideal democracy, the emphasis is on individual freedoms, political participation and the protection of civil liberties. The idea is that citizens have a say in their government and can hold leaders accountable through elections. This can lead to a more pluralistic society where various voices and perspectives are heard. However, the much-touted democracy can be bureaucratically slow and inefficient in decision-making, and it may struggle with short-term political considerations, foreign interference, and rigged elections. On the other hand, the success of autocracy in China and Russia challenges the Western notion that democracy is the only path to societal prosperity. In these nations, the absence of traditional democratic systems has not impeded their economic growth. Rather, it has allowed for swift and decisive decision-making. Unencumbered by political opposition, such autocratic governments can implement long-term strategies without the delays associated with democratic debates and transitions of power. The centralized control in China and Russia has not only enabled quick adaptation to changing global economic conditions, but also pursuit of economic policies with guaranteed stability and consistency, attracting foreign investments and fostering innovation, rapid industrialization and economic development. Moreover, these autocracies have focused on advanced education, infrastructure and technology, leading to skilled workforces and competitive industries. Yes, Autocracy has its own inherent drawbacks, such as a lack of checks and balances and political freedoms, which can lead to abuses of power and a disregard for individual rights and civil liberties. 
but critics of autocracy often overlook the cultural nuances and historical contexts that shape governance styles. What works for one society might not necessarily work for another. The experiences of China and Russia show that under certain conditions, autocratic leadership can indeed facilitate economic development, challenging the assumption that democracy is the only recipe for progress. Then again, the debate over the effectiveness of autocracy versus democracy should consider not just economic metrics, but also the broader spectrum of human rights and governance that play a role in determining the quality of life for a nation's citizens. Ultimately, the effectiveness of a political system depends on various factors, including the context, culture and leadership. The African context, fraught with tribalism, a self-sabotaging electorate and corrupt Western puppets, serves as a cautionary tale, emphasizing the need to approach with humility the specific circumstances and needs of a country and its people when evaluating whether democracy or autocracy is more suitable. The optimal system might even lie somewhere in between, incorporating elements of both to strike a balance between individual freedoms and effective governance, between malevolent capitalism and benevolent dictatorship.